click on the start free icon. Sign in using your Microsoft or GitHub account if you're not already signed in. Continue by completing the required fields, verifying your identity, inputting your credit card details, and completing the signup. Once complete, a new browser window will open welcoming you to Azure. At any point, you can simply open a new browser window and enter the URL portal.azure.com. And then, after you access it, you just have to log in if you're not already, and you will be taken to your subscription. Great job on completing the first task of this project. You should now have successfully created an Azure subscription and successfully logged into the Microsoft Azure portal. In this task, you learned how to set up a free trial for Microsoft Azure and to how to sign in using your new subscription. In the next task, you will pick up where we left off here and we will get familiar with navigating the Azure portal in preparation for creating our computer vision cognitive services resource. Welcome back. In this task, we will get familiar with the Azure portal interface and create a resource group in preparation for creating a new computer vision cognitive service resource. The Azure portal is a web-based unified console. Within the, this console, you can build, manage, and monitor everything from simple web apps to cognitive services or complex cloud deployments. It is worth noting that the graphical interface is not the only way to manage Azure. Command line and scripting can also be used. However, in this project, we are focusing solely on the graphical interface. So let's start navigating. Make sure you're logged in and on the homepage. On the top left of the portal interface, you will see three dashes, which are often referred as the hamburger menu. This is the Azure portal menu. Clicking on it will give you a list of all the sections you can navigate to depending on what features you are interested, such as resource groups, virtual machines, web apps, artificial intelligence resources, and so on. On the main section of the homepage, you will see a heading, Azure Services. And the first icon displayed is Create a Resource. It is worth noting that these icons may not always appear in the same order depending on their usage. That is why we have an arrow to the right, allowing us to see more services. Now let's get going and create our first resource in Azure, which is going to be a resource group. A resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. All objects you create in Azure for a project should belong to a resource group. This allows you to group objects together for easy management. Under the heading Azure services, click on the icon for resource groups. This will open a new window that will display existing resource groups. You will see here that I already have some created. If you're new to Azure, probably this page will be empty. On the top left of the window, click on the plus sign on the add sign to open a new window where we can create our first resource group. You will see your free Azure subscription selected and two required fields. In the first, we will enter a name for our resource group. Let's name it Project RG. The second option allows us to select a region where the resource group will be created. We can leave this as is for our project. However, usually this would be a region near to where you are physically located. Let's finish creating our resource group by cl clicking on the Review plus Create button on the bottom of the screen. The review checks that the information we have provided is valid, and you will see a green circle with a tick at the top saying Validation Passed. If you get a validation error, simply click on the previous on the bottom of the screen and ensure you have completed the required fields correctly the name of the resource group and its location, most probably. And then 
Click Review plus Create again. Now let's click on Create. A notification message will appear informing you of the successful creation of the resource group, and you will also see the resource group appear in the resource groups window. Cool. Great job on completing this part of the project. You should now be more familiar with the Azure portal and have successfully created a resource group. In this task, we learned some new ways to navigate to the Azure portal and successfully created our first resource in Azure, a resource group, which we will use as we move through our upcoming tasks. In the next task, we will pick up where we left off here and begin the process of creating a new Azure computer vision resource. Welcome back. In this task, we will begin creating our computer vision resource. Using the Azure portal to create, it is useful as the graphical interface steps you through the required information and provides hints and helpful messages. To start creating our computer vision resource, make sure you're signed into your Azure portal and if necessary, navigate to the homepage. From the home page, select the icon Create a Resource. This opens up the Azure Marketplace, where we have the ability to select from categories of resources such as compute, identity, networking, or etc. Clicking on the See All button next to the Azure Marketplace heading. This option displays all available images on the Azure mar Marketplace. From the list of available filters going across the screen, click on Publisher Type. Select Microsoft as the filter value. Now in the search box, type in Computer Vision. An action that search by pressing enter to further filter the available resources. The filter result will show several related resources. However, the resource that you're looking for should be probably the first one that appears. It should be a computer vision resource published by Microsoft, which usually has this icon. The icon might change from time to time, but this is the resource that you're looking for. Continue by clicking on it, and then afterwards, click on Create. You should now notice a series of tabs at the top of the page, beginning with Basics. Selecting Next at the bottom of the screen will take you to the next configurable section. However, you can move between the sections at will with the tabs running across at the top that will identify each section. At the very simple level, you can complete the required fields identified by red stars in the basic tabs and simply select click on the review plus create button as we did when creating the resource group. So let's start off with the basic step. The first item we need to complete is the subscription option. Select your subscription if it's not already filled, and in our case, it will be our Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. And probably for you, if you're using a free trial, it will be your free trial subscription. For resource group, you always have the option to create a new group or to use an existing group. Since we already built one, let's click on the drop down menu and select the group we created in task one, project RG. In the region section, you can select the region which is most appropriate for you. For the sake of this demo, we will choose West Europe. In the name section, enter a name for the resource. Keep in mind that this name will define a custom domain name, so be aware that you can only use alphanumeric characters and hyphens. I will name my resource cv-app-demo373. Please keep in mind that these names are unique, and this name that I have chosen might not be available. 
In case this is happening, just change the name to something you prefer or at least change the numbers that they use at the end of the name. Usually it's best practice to standardize your resource names so you can easily identify them by purpose. So keep that in mind when creating resources for Azure projects. The next section is related to the pricing tire. For the sake of our demo, we will choose the free tire. But if you want more bandwidth and you plan on creating a resource for production use, you should go on the standard tire. Next thing that we should do is to scroll a bit down and check the checkbox for the responsible AI notice. It's always a good idea to read the documentation for that. So if you want to do it, please pause the video, read it, and we will continue afterwards. For the scope of our project, we can skip directly to the review plus create tab. Reason for that is because advanced configurations in our computer vision resource, such as networking or tagging, are not needed at this point in time. But if you want to configure them at some point, you can go on next, configure, for example, networking, and then go on next, put some tags on your resource, and so on. After the validation is successful, clicking on create will start creating your resource. This usually is pretty fast, taking a few dozen seconds. Once the deployment process is complete, you should see a validation message just as here that your deployment is complete. To see your resource, you can click on go to resource here, you will be presented with a computer vision resource that you have just created. Well done. Good job on completing this part of the project. In this task, we focused on creating a computer vision resource, which will help us execute API calls for generating computer vision predictions. In the next task, we will pick up where we left off here and start exploring this new built resource and understand how it can be used. Welcome back. In this task, we will learn how to retrieve the necessary information from the computer vision resource in order to be able to execute API calls to generate predictions. Also, we will find out how to access the API console provided by Azure to quickly try the APIs without writing code. So let's get started from where we left off. By now, you should see the quick start page that is presented for every cognitive resource that's built in Azure. Regardless if it's a computer vision one or something else, you will always see this quick start page. Also, the menu that you see on the left will also be the same. Probably you have already noticed the three steps that are presented on the screen and represent a quick start guidance on how to get started with computer vision. In short terms, it works like any other API. A web API call needs to be made towards an endpoint, and that web API call needs to be authenticated with an API key. For our resource, the simplest way to identify the endpoint and the key that we will be using to make API calls and generate predictions is by clicking on the keys and endpoint button located on the left menu. Here, once accessed, you will see four parameters. The first two are two keys that will be used for authentication purposes for any API call needed to be executed. These keys are anonymized by default, but if you want to see their string value, you can simply click on show keys. Also, at any point, if you feel that your keys are not secure anymore, you can always regenerate them by clicking the buttons located on the top of the pane. Regenerate Q1 and regenerate Q2. The other parameters found here are the endpoint that is dedicated for your resource, which is basically a URL to which you need to direct the API calls. The last parameter defines the geographical location of the resource. Now that we have identified this information, 
Let's continue by accessing the API console provided by Microsoft. The simplest way to do that is by navigating back to the Quick Start page by clicking the Quick Start button on the left menu. Here, in the section dedicated for step two, you should see a small button named API console. By clicking on it, a new tab should open on your browser and redirect you to the API console dedicated for the computer vision API. You'll notice that a version is mentioned on this page. Usually, the API console loads with the most recent version globally available in order for you to make use of the latest features and updates. Well done. Good job on completing this part of the project. In this task, we have identified how to retrieve the necessary parameters to execute computer vision API calls and also learn how to access the API console. In the next task, we will pick up where we left off here and we will continue by exploring how API calls available in computer vision resource can be executed. Welcome back. In this task, we will understand how API calls can be executed with the help of the API console. You will observe that the computer vision service contains a palette of several APIs that offer pre-built predictions for several scenarios. So let's go ahead and continue from where we left off. In the API console page, you can observe on the left side a menu that describes different HTTP actions, some of them being marked as post actions, some of them being marked as get actions. All of these actions are specific to a subset of capabilities that Azure Computer Vision provides. For example, let's click on Analyze Image, which is a post action. If we scroll a bit and read the description of this API, we can observe that this operation will help us extract a rich set of visual features based on the content of an image. After, you can see a description of how the API can be called, what input methods are supported, and how a successful response will look like. You will see the request URL that needs to be used to perform this action as well as the requested parameters and requested headers to perform the API call. This documentation is pretty important and helps you understand how the API works. So please pause the video, read carefully all the information presented in the page, and then let's continue after you have finished studying the page. Once you have finished reading and analyzing the information presented, please scroll on the page and locate the section where it presents the different regions that can be used in the testing console to perform an API call. Because our resource is created in West Europe, I will click on West Europe. If in the prior task you created your resource in another region, please continue by clicking the button for that region. You will now see a new page that again presents the description of the service and then requires some parameters to be inputted to execute the API. You will first have to make sure we use the resource that we built earlier. So to do that, please click on the drop down menu for name and choose the second option. Once this is done, complete the resource name input field with the name of your resource. Mine has the name cv-app-demo373. On the query parameters, you can configure the details related to what you want to analyze in your image. By clicking on visual features, you can choose between several options. 
for the sake of, sake of our demo, I will let categories select it. For the details section, you can instruct the API to detect either celebrities or landmarks. For the sake of our demo, I will choose landmarks. The language section instructs in which language should the API response come back. There are several languages supported, but for our demo, we will just leave English as selected. Model version defines what pre-built model should the API use. It's always best to leave it as is on latest. Scrolling down further, you will see that also some headers need to be configured. Since our demo will have content type as application JSON, we will leave the content type as is. However, if you plan on testing other types of content, you better choose the appropriate value here. There is also a header that makes reference to the API key that needs to be used for authenticating the call. Remember the keys that we have identified in the Azure portal in our computer vision resource? We will have to use one of those. So in order to do that, change the browser tab to the Azure portal. Go to the keys and endpoints section. And here, click on the copy button next to key one parameter. Once this is done, paste your key in subscription key section. Last but not least, we will need to specify a request body for our API call. Basically, this request body is the content that we want analyzed by our computer vision resource. This can be an image, a URL, a stream. It can be many things depending on how you want to configure your application. For the sake of our demo, we will use a URL which points to an image that we want to analyze. So to continue, please type into the body JSON the following URL. Yes, github.com slash katapopa247 slash images slash raw slash main slash Eiffel dot JPEG. If you access this URL in another browser tab, you will observe that this represents a picture of the Eiffel Tower from France. The last step now is to click on the send button on our API console page to make the API call that will analyze our image and make predictions on it. Well done. Good job on completing this part of the project. In this task, we have learned how API calls can be executed via the API console and also went through and discussed all the parameters that can be configured when making a computer vision API call. In the next task, we will pick up where we left off here and we will continue by analyzing the response of the API call to understand how computer vision predictions are structured and what data they contain. Welcome back. In this task, we will analyze the result of the API call that we just made in order to understand the valuable data that the computer vision service is providing. After we clicked send, we should see now a response status right below it. And if it is a successful API, it should return 200 OK. If you receive other responses, especially from the 400 category, it will probably mean that either the authentication key, either the location, or either the name of the resource that you configure as parameters are incorrect. So you'll need to revise those. The response content is the answer that we're looking for. This contains the predictions that the computer vision can offer. The response is structured in a JSON format, and you can see that for our API call, there are two sections that describe the things that we mentioned in our API call as parameters the categories, and the landmarks. 
As you can see, the computer vision API predicted that the picture which we sent for analysis can be categorized as a picture that represents a building. And it also recognized an important landmark, the Eiffel Tower. Also, I will want you to take a close look at the response. In each of the sections, you will see some parameters that return the confidence of the prediction that has been made. You can see that for categories, the API call is about 94% sure that this picture is with a building on it. While regarding landmarks, it is 99% sure that the picture contains the Eiffel Tower. Our API response also contains some other details about the image that we sent for analysis, like the height and the width, its format, but also the model version that the computer vision API has used for this prediction. Well done. Good job on completing this part of the project. In this task, we analyzed how the response of an API call looks like and learned how we can interpret it to extract the predictions that were made. In the next task, we will pick up where we left off here and we will continue by taking a look at the different variations of APIs available in computer vision and understand which ones are synchronous and which are asynchronous. Welcome back. In this task, we will briefly go through the available APIs in computer vision to have a grasp of what data can be predicted. So let's continue from where we left off. If you scroll back on the top of the page, you'll observe that on the left side is a menu that describes different HTTP actions, some of them being marked as post actions, some of them being marked as get actions. Each one of these API calls have different roles in performing different predictions, except for the read API and the recognized domain specific content API, all the other ones work in a synchronous manner. That means that the API request as well as the API response is done in a single go, exactly as we did with the analyze image request that we did earlier. That was a synchronous API request. An asynchronous request means that the prediction is generated in two steps. First, you have to send the request for analysis, and afterwards, you will make a new request to get that predicted data. So two requests in total instead of one. And for that matter, let's click on the read API, the post action, and let's analyze something. Make sure you select again the correct region. Mine is West Europe. If you look at a description of the service, you'll see that the read API helps extracting text from images and documents. Let's continue by making an API call to see how it works. So make sure again to set the correct parameters on the host section. Choose from the drop down, the second option for name and then input the name of your resource. Then in the query parameters section, select the appropriate language. This refers to the language of the text that will be in the picture that we will analyze. So let's choose this as English for our demo. The other parameters, I will want to remove them. I just want to make you understand that almost all of these parameters are optional when making an API call. In case they are not mentioned, some of them will either be considered with the default value that Azure set for them, either they will not be considered at all. So for the three other parameters, let's click on remove parameter for each one. Then continue in the headers section by selecting the content type as application JSON. And then make sure to copy the computer vision key from Azure and paste it in the subscription key input inbox.
as request body, you will see that it is already pre-populated with a demo URL. We will use this URL for the sake of the demo. But before analyzing the image that is at the URL, please copy the URL and open it in another browser tab, just so you, we are aware of what we will analyze and how the image looks like. As you can see, the image represents a label that contains various text regarding the nutrition facts of some product. Go back to the API console and continue the analysis by clicking send and after you get an accepted status, look at the response. Seems a bit different now than the previous one, right? There is no JSON that contains predictions. Instead, you generated an operation ID that will help you get your prediction result. In the operation location section, you will see that the last part represents an ID. Make sure you copy that ID as we will use it shortly to fetch our predictions. After you copy the ID, scroll back to the top of the page and now click on the get read result action. Then, make sure you choose again the correct location. Mine is US Europe. Then, make sure you set the correct parameters for the name of the resource, just as we did previously. Now, in the Operation ID input box, please paste the ID that we just copied earlier the one that was generated by the read API action. Continue by pasting into the subscription key input box, the key of our computer vision resource. Go back to Azure, copy the key, and then paste it here. Now, let's see what the read API offers us as predictions. Click on the send button. Soon enough, the response status should be 200 OK. And in the response content, you should see a JSON structure that contains the result we are looking for. You can observe that JSON contains the extracted text from the picture, as well as confidence sections for each phrase or even word that was extracted. Also, there is another section for each one of them named bounding box, which pinpoints the location of the world on the image pixel-wise. Well done. Good job on completing this part of the project. In this task, we analyzed how the response of an asynchronous API call looks like and learned what is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous calls. In the next and final task, we will pick up where we left off here and we will continue by understanding the variety of the APIs available in computer vision and how they can be integrated into software applications. Welcome back. Ready for the final step? In this task, we will go a bit through the available API actions of computer vision and also understand how we can integrate these API calls in our applications. So. Let's get right into it from where we left off. By scrolling back at the top of the page, you should already be now familiar with the left menu that specifies the different APIs available. As you've already seen by now, the APIs have different functions. Analyze image helped us identify the category of an image and also recognize landmarks while the read API helped us extract text from images. The other ones that you see available have different scopes. Describe image generates a description of an image in human readable language. Detect objects 
performs object detection on an image. Get area of interest identifies the most important area of an image. Get thumbnail generates a thumbnail image with a specified width and height. OCR performs text detection, just as read API, and tag image API generates a list of words or tags that are relevant to the analyzed content. The best way to understand how these APIs function and what they do is by simply navigating through each one of them and reading the documentation page displayed. I'll let you do that for a while, so please pause this video and go through each one of the page, read the documentation of each one, and we'll continue shortly. Finished? Great! If you were paying a bit of attention while you were inspecting the documentation pages, you should have seen that at the bottom of each page, there is a section named Code Samples. This section is very useful as it contains examples in several programming languages on how the API call can be performed. You can see here examples in curl, C sharp, Java, JavaScript, Object C, PHP, Python, or Ruby. So, no matter what programming language you choose for your application, for sure you can integrate the computer vision APIs into it to generate valuable predictions. This is how you start building computer vision applications by using these snippets of code. Congratulations! You have successfully completed all the tasks within the project. In this project, you learned to sign up for a free Azure trial account, successfully logged into the Azure portal, navigated and created the computer vision resource, and understood how this service can be used by generating predictions through the API console and then understanding how the API calls can be integrated into your software application. As a one less complementary final step, if you want to delete this demo, you can always go back to the Azure portal and delete either the resource or the resource group entirely. However, the computer vision resource generates cost only if you use it. So its existence will not generate cost and you can leave it as is if you want. So wasn't that fun? Now you can integrate the power of artificial intelligence into your code to create next generation applications.